Hey there guys, how's it going? So I've been thinking a lot about bait banners lately. When the new High School Challenge Metal Deal was announced today, the term bait 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 was thrown around by me, by everyone else on Twitter, on Discord, Reddit, everywhere we basically talk about this game, and I thought, maybe that's not necessarily fair to new players that sort of haven't been, haven't been around as long as we have, haven't seen the tricks, haven't been around the block enough times to realise that there are certain things in this game that are definitely, definitely bait, and it's not that they're necessarily not worth pulling on at all, but it's usually a couple of telltale signs you can see that really clue you in to be like, okay, I can see why they're doing that, because that usually means something good is coming in a few days time. So I thought in the context of these three banners that are out today, I talk about a bait banner and how to how to potentially identify one. So let's start off with this high score metal deal right here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my footage of the game right here. Alright, let's have a look at it. So the first thing you notice, 1,500 jewels, awesome. Really, really, really awesome price point. It makes it very, very, very tempting to go ahead and pull for this deal. Three days left. So this banner is only around for 96 hours in total, which means that you haven't got long to make up your mind. It's gonna go away pretty soon. And if you wanna do this pulls, again, you've only got 96 hours from the time that it's released to the time that it goes away to actually go ahead and do, go ahead and do that. Compare that to something like this deal right here, which has been around for, what, six days already? and will be around for another 10. That means you have a much, much longer time to go ahead and decide, do I actually want to pull for this thing? Is it going to help me out or not? Or, you know, can I can I bear to skip this one? This, you don't have much time to think about it. If you want this thing, you need to go ahead and get it right now. These are very high-powered medals. These medals are some of the most sought-after medals in the game, some of the most rarest in the entire game. And honestly, you know, like I said, the most powerful. I can show you guys how powerful they are. If PvP is the biggest source of competition in this game right now, which I kind of believe that it is, single and random target medals are the most important in the game, apart from buffers, simply because they do the most damage. That's pound for pound, they do the most damage in the entire game. And if we go ahead and filter out, here's my here's my latest updated chart with the current Kairi's mana boost, the 150. If we filter out basically the top right corner of the overall power of every single medal in the entire game's graph, and only look at single and random targets. Again, we're filtering out anything below tier five, so tiers one through three, and we're filtering out the multipliers below 40, basically. So we're only looking at the top top right corner of that overall graph. We can see, in terms of power, well, actually, we got a new king recently. We got a brand new king recently, being the Terra Venom Aqua Medal, which finally kicks over Luxord Sword Plus as being the most powerful medal in the entire game to one single target. And Luxord Sword Plus, well, I guess, was only there half the time when he crits, so, Terravin and Aqua are the brand new kings, the combined metal. Um, Terravin and Aqua, the individual metals, are only slightly weaker, so consistently we'll deal as much damage as Luxor Plus does with the crit. But right below that, we have these high score challenge medals. So again, like I said, the banner is very tempting because even, you know, any player in the game knows these things are very, very, very strong. We're only looking at the five on the right hand side here because I guess the Incredibles one, you know, fair enough, was only a limited time, you know, crossover event. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Cloud and Leon just doesn't exist in our version, so I guess they thought, well, we can skip that one, leave that one out. Uh, then we have Boss Zemnus, Sora and Simba, Zack B, VVB, and Timeless River Illustrated Sora. So, lots of really, really good medals here. Again, like I said, the most powerful medals in the entire game, short of the brand new Supernovas and Lock Sword. So, very, very, very tempting stuff. Now, again, looking in terms of bait, I'm sure that anyone can tell you that medals that were once considered very, very, very high class, some of the best, you know, meta breaking or best of their roles in the entire game, being offered at a cheap price should instantly set up a warning bell to you. Anyone that bought the Foretellers and then found out that the brand new Kyrie and the whole new buff cap was coming out, or only a couple weeks later, can definitely go ahead and tell you that. And when I say were once considered the best of their class, what do I mean by that? Because you guys are saying, well, right now, well, what do you mean? I mean, yeah, these ones are technically better, but these are still the best single target medals in the entire game, right? Well... In terms of their multiplier, yes, but let's not forget the Supernova medals exist now. Although these Supernova medals right here are, let's say, seven-eighths of the overall damage output in terms of multiplier of these high score challenge medals, let us forget these things have this ridiculous Supernova mechanic to them, which means that once they're finished firing off their attack, you can just press that funny little button right there and fire off one of the most insanely powerful hits in the entire game for zero gauge costs, completely free of charge, and just, boof, fire it off and deal huge amounts of damage to your enemy. It is absolutely insane. So in terms of overall damage output, factoring in both the multiplier and the supernova, these things sit way above these things in terms of overall damage. And guess what? That is not going to stop anytime soon. It's a recently introduced mechanic, and just like Nova, just like Override, just like everything in the past, they're going to bleed that thing dry. We are only about to have Kingdom... Well, you know, we are, what, 10 days now from Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out? And we are now... <laughs> We've just started to get in this side of the graph right here, and that is not going to slow down. 
I expect to see metals hovering around this area and potentially pushing it even further in the next few months. We're not coming back. We are basically not coming back. So that's what I mean by you could go ahead and get yourself the perfect. Like, let's say you went ahead and did 10 pulls right now and were lucky enough to get all five of these guys with perfect traits somehow combined with the traits you already had. That could be great for the next few months. That could absolutely be great. Until it's not, because just like everything else in this game, eventually it all turns to crap, you know? How many people are still using their original foretellers? Well, original foretellers are a bad example because they're not, they're not the worst things in the entire world, but the new foretellers, the stained glass, any of that crap right there that used to be the absolute best of the best, who's still using those right now? Not many people, unfortunately. You know, prime metals, everything that's like the hot whiz-bang thing. Yeah, prime metals are the perfect example. What, what's happened to them? <laughs> Tier 6, everything that was like, oh, here's the brand new thing for a while, and they can sit on it for a couple of months and then be like, nah, whatever, we don't care about that. Let's move on to the next mechanic right now. Tier 9 exists right now, but we already know they've made room for Tier 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way to 16 on that little graph right there. So, not saying they'll do it in any sort of a hurry, but this stuff will all be outdated so soon. So soon, we know this. And again, like I mentioned, Kingdom Hearts 3 is very, very close. That's the other telltale sign. If there's usually a big event coming out pretty soon, like Black Friday was to Christmas, I guess, um, that's usually a pretty good sign that something big is on the horizon. So I would say a very, very limited time amount of window. I would also add to that the ability to only purchase once or twice a day to make it seem like you really have to buy this thing. You only have 24 hours. Like, oh, you, you know, you may want to pull this thing all three days. So you may as well pull it at least once on the first day and then you'll know for sure. So I would say a very limited time window on the banner. I would say a uh, limited time, you know, a limit on how many times you can pull it per day as if oh, it's such a good banner, we couldn't possibly let you pull more than three times a day or more than once a day. That would just be, that would just be too unfair. Um, the ability to buy medals for a very cheap price that used to be the absolute hot shit and a big event on the horizon. I would say those are some really key signs that this is a bait banner. Now bait by itself doesn't necessarily correlate to bad straight away. A lot of people in the audience right now could be going ahead, do a couple pulls on these things and combine them with the high score challenge medals that they won from the initial high score challenge and do pretty well for themselves. You know, you could get extra attack in some of the right places, which could, you know, make a really big difference to your game. And again, if I turn off the robotic analytical part of my brain that says, you know, min max everything all the time and stop listening to that for a second and listen to the more fun having side, which of course the bait, you know, the fishing hook really appeals to. <laughs> and that'll say, you know, these are really, really rare medals that don't come back very, very often, if ever at all, for a really, really cheap price. And you know, they are fun, powerful medals. Maybe it's worth doing a couple pulls on that banner. When the initial high score challenge came out, uh, everything after Sora and Simba, they made the high score challenge really, really easy to get. In fact, my brother that started literally halfway through the Xemnas event was able to get Xemnas, Zack, Vivi, and uh, Thomas River Sora with a little bit of advice from me and borrowing a defensive medal. He was able to get literally all four of these medals. Let's say that you're sitting there watching this video right now. You are in a similar situation to me in that you own the four out of the five uh, high score challenge medals right there and you say, okay, I'm going to do one pull. Let's ignore the 20%, which is again a huge percentage that we're going to filter off right away to get Sora and Simba. Let's focus on the remaining 80%. And of those 80%, there's going to be 1 in 13 that'll get extra attack, 1 in 13 that'll get ground, aerial, and or strength, which are probably the four most desirable traits. So if 4 out of 13 of you, of that 80%, will do pretty well and go, okay, yeah, that was worth it. Of course, that will leave 9 out of 13 of you, that, which is again the overwhelming majority, that go, Oh crap, I just spent 1500 jewels to, you know, get poison resist on my Xemnas. Didn't really need that at all, I wish I hadn't done the pull. I just stopped for a second there and realized I was literally describing the process of gambling. It's like, well if you're willing to acknowledge the risk that you're probably going to lose in the situation, aka get a bad trait, but there's a small chance that you'll win in the situation, aka get extra attack, then sure, go ahead and gamble on that chance at 1500 jewels a pop. It's like, oh my god, the gaming industry is just so polluted at this point, I just, I don't know if it can be saved, but... <laughs> At the end of the day, this is meant to be a fun game, you know, featuring our favorite characters from our favorite series. So, seriously, if anyone out there needs help, you know, I've read plenty of Reddit posts, I've read plenty of stories about people, not just in this game, but in plenty of different games that realize, holy crap, I have a real problem. Because it is gambling, and it is designed to trick your brain into, like, giving it that, that all those dopamine hits that real gambling does, that it's horrible. It's the absolute worst thing in the world. If you ever need help, send me a message. Shoot me a message, alright? I'll definitely convince you of the free-to-play lifestyle. I've been doing it for three years now and loving it. Loving it to bits. <laughs> Sorry, off track. I really want to believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 Kari Oshian will be coming back sooner rather than later. And I've had this theory in my head for a little while. It's like, what if you released Kingdom Hearts 3 and at the same time released a Mercy for Kingdom Hearts 3 Kari Oshian? And this was the bait for that. And a Mercy for everyone. A 5 pull Mercy. Maybe a 10, but let's say, let's say a 5 pull Mercy for everyone. 
The community, I will say, is a bit fickle. They're usually tending towards the more negative side towards the game. But every now and then when they you know, they do something nice or something right, the community just goes, oh my god, I'm in love with them again. And can you imagine if they put out a 5 pull Mercy for Kingdom Hearts 3 Kari or Shion or both at the same time? Everyone would be in love with them again. Everyone. Or at least the overwhelming majority would be. And if the sentiment around this game at the time of Kingdom Hearts 3's release was overwhelmingly positive, like if people finished playing Kingdom Hearts 3, were hungry for more, and were like, I want to get, you know, I want more Kingdom Hearts, I want more Kingdom Hearts, should I play the mobile game, and they reached out and asked the community, right now the community's going to tell you no, stay far away, it's a horrible pay-to-win gacha game which exploits your love of the franchise to try and open your wallet. And I don't blame them, and it's like that almost all the time. In fact, it's like that almost, like, 99% of the time it's like that. But if the overwhelming sentiment was like, yeah, it's just a great time to get into it. Kari and Shion are, like, are merciful right now. Yeah, yeah, get in, get in, get in, get in now before it gets bad again. That would get a lot of people in the door, right? So, I don't know. Again, I'm not saying that I'm right, but I think that would be a smart decision. Again, I've thought of plenty of decisions in the past. Like, hell, I don't know. Let Global be caught up on the story, which I would consider to be smart. But I guess I'm not one of the big wings, big wings at Square that have, you know, any sort of control over this. But... Again, take that as just a, an Australian guy, you know, being hypothetical here, but wouldn't it be great if Akari on Mercy, sorry, Akari or Shion on Mercy was coming back soon for everyone, not just for pay-to-play players. But yeah, if you're a veteran player and wants to gamble your chances of getting a good trade, sure, I'll go for this banner. I mean, it's literally the, def the definition of bait because there's a very, very small chance that this thing's going to turn out well for you and it's more of just have a bit of fun with it. Have a bit of fun. It's cheap. It's the sort of thing that is deceptively cheap so as to erode your savings to eat away at the potential of mercing something when it comes back later on to force you into buying VIP or jewel packs to get it, but we know this already. Um, if you're a new player and it's got like still tons of story to farm, tons of proud mode to farm, and kind of needs something useful to actually spend their tier 8 fairies on, if you're a new player, I'd probably do two or three pulls in this banner just to have, again, currently the best medals in the entire game and have them and then have something if you eventually do get some tier 8 fairies to evolve with rather than evolving like I've seen people evolving Kara EX plus and Shion EX plus and it's like stop it don't do that alrighty I've talked about that high score metal deal for way too long way too many takes I don't even know what I said and what I didn't say at this point hopefully that all made it in there but uh, that's my thoughts on bait and the high score metal deal really quickly the other two uh, the imitation deal I think is a really 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 cool conceptual deal uh, my big problem with like the Sephiroth banners and those older sort of banners is because there's like a limited amount of slots of what they can give away in a banner, but they sort of come up with a pretty elegant solution, right? In the past, you'd have like Yuffie be guaranteed there uh, instead of a trait medal on the free banner. They sort of got their way around that by going, okay, we'll give you a trait medal here and not a Yuffie, but they've done it even more elegantly here where they've gone, okay, we'll give you that one guaranteed seven star right there, as well as the, the guaranteed medal that we want to give you, and we'll give you 10 VIP coins, which effectively lets you buy the trait. So that's a pretty elegant way of getting around it, if you ask me. I think I, I would like to see that continue, because I think that's a pretty clever solution. Um, having said that, though, the randomness aspect of not knowing if you're going to get Rai, Fru, or Cypher is a little bit, yeah, but at the same time, in the pet slot, it really doesn't matter which one that you get, and you can sort of make a case for any of those. Like, I guess you could have, you know, Fairy Stars, you'd really want that one on slot 5. Um, yeah... You don't really want... I mean, you could have that copying the first metal, I guess, on Fairy Stars. But depending on which keyboard you want to use, you could sort of make a case for having any of those. Or you could, like, you know, having them as a friend metal. I don't know. It's powerful tier 8 copycat metals that copy two spaces in front of you. What's not to like? Apart from the gauge cost and the fact that they obviously can't fire off a supernova. Pretty pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. I'm really disappointed at the fact, though, that for whatever reason, they changed the drop rates from JP. And even though we can go right down here to the newcomers deal and buy five copycat medals right here for 1500 jewels, well, one of those five, you now have a 75% chance of getting the same copycat medals for 3k in this deal. And it's like, man, if you just left the rates alone and given us a really good chance of getting either Repliku, Illustrated Dusk, or uh, Phantom, I would be all over this banner. I would seriously be all over it. But as it stands, I can't really justify it, unfortunately. Where is it? Yeah, here it is right here. So, nope. It's those medals that we saw in that banner a second ago are like what you're almost definitely going to get here. A 75% chance of getting one of those five uh, swap out Lion Peeve and Nominate. And again, the rest of the percentage is divvied up towards these medals right here, which it's such a shame because again, I would love to get Phantom. Phantom has been calling out to me since I bloody skipped him back in July, which I feel stupid about, but I did. So I would love a chance to get him. I would love a chance to get him, but the odds are just too small. They're just too small, unfortunately, for me to consider doing that. And I spent too much money on the TVA banner anyway, so... 
And lastly, we'll mention Xemnas Plus really quickly. It's both a banner and an avatar board. We talked about Xemnas Plus the other night. In terms of its multipliers, we can show you that again. This is the all target multiplier list right here, and it just sits literally right in that mush right there along with Larkstein. So it is pretty much the definition of average. The multiplier is not super impressive, but I think the debuffs are what make up for it, given that it debuffs both general and reverse defense all the way down and overwrites them to negative 15, which is spectacular. If you missed out on Xion, uh, uh, Xion, whatever the new one, Supernova Xion, or uh, <laughs> uh, having difficulties getting your reverse buffs down to negative 15, I think this is an absolute stellar medal for that. And again, given that the fact that you can get it with five trait medals from it from Xemnas' event, as well as either five trait medals from the banner if you go that route, or three from the avatar board, means you have a pretty good shot at getting decent traits on it. Again, obviously you want extra attack, ground, aerial. If you get those three traits, it'll make a fantastic Colosseum medal. You don't really ever want anything, I guess you could go for a raid medal if you wanted to, I guess, but you don't really want anything outside of that because it's not going to be good in PvP unless you want it just there for the debuffs, even though it only lasts for one turn, so yeah, you, you could, I guess, um, but its multiplier is not really suited for that. It really is suited for Colosseum PvE content, uh, and again, with that, you want ground, aerial, and extra attack pretty much. You could, of course, roll crap traits like poor old Aaron did, the erroneous one, sorry buddy about that, um, but again, you have eight chances, so pretty decent odds of getting something decent out of that. I am personally looking at this medal going, well, we know that the first six months of Organization 13 medals ended in the seventh month with an event that gave you the opportunity to earn all the previous six again, and we're currently sitting at the fifth out of the next sixth. Now, Xion and Roxas are going to sit in there somewhere as either a combined roxas Xion medal or two separate events. I'm scratching my head, they're going, well, when are we going to find out about that? We're probably going to find out about it after Zigbar, so we're in January right now with Xemnas. Next month's going to be Zigbar February. Then they could have Roxas and Xion sometime after that, either in March, potentially, who knows, or sometime after that. We've got to, of course, factor in that we didn't get in Global, we didn't get Zoldan the first time around, so we may see him in March instead for us, or they could just skip that event entirely and have us go back completely in sync with JP. Who knows? But what I'm trying to say there is March, maybe, or April, maybe, we'll see the event return, which will give us back all these medals again, so... I'm looking at that event going, I'm hoping it's March, and I can wait two months to have this guy. I like him a lot, I like him a lot in theory, but I can wait two months for him, if that makes sense. I'd, I'd much I'd much rather be saving my jewels right now for whatever comes come Kingdom Hearts 3. That's that's the priority right now. And again, I would love to have a, rever a reverse magic 8 star, sorry, tier 8, 7 star medal for, if nothing else, sub slots, but I can wait. I'm again hoping, or taking it for granted, I suppose, that I'm going to be able to beat the event in two months, given that... It was difficult right now, it was very difficult right now, and this event, like all the other events, will be buffed in two months, or whenever the event decides to return, that gives us another chance to earn these things, so I'm taking it for granted quite a bit that I'm going to be able to earn this thing, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed, I'll find a way. And with that guys, this long, extremely long video is done and dusted, I've been talking here for probably way, way too long, doing too many takes, I don't know what's been wrong with me, but in any case, um, tell me what I missed, I know I missed some Telltale Science of Bait banners, I think I said one that got cut out of the video in the final cut, I'm not too sure, but in any case, let me know what you think guys, I really do want to hear your thoughts, because again, we're all trying to help out the new players here, there are a lot of things that this game does that I really think are just designed to trick people, I really think that, and these banners, these ban listen, this high score medal deal, that's complete bait, that is complete 100% bait, but you know what, sometimes it's fun to get caught on the hook every now and then, anyway, I'm definitely rambling now, so I'll see you guys really soon. Uh, Kingdom Hearts Twitter's been tweeting out like crazy a bunch of new images from Kingdom Hearts 3, so I'm getting all hyped about that. And uh, yeah, I'm done rambling. See you guys really soon. All the best. Bye.